run to us with a bit of food before they actually fly. Now unfortunately, after 13 years, we haven't really progressed. Um, so what he tends to do is walk around. So we'll bring him around the edge of the arena so you can see him a little bit closer up then. So I say his name is Basil, the boy Basil. He might do a bit of flying if we're really, really lucky. But again, all he's doing is working for food. And he knows when he comes up to me, he gets a reward of food. What is the point in uh, flying when he knows it's easier to walk? So he's just saving energy all the time. And that's what birds always do in the wild, not just birds of prey, but all birds in general. They are only flying for three reasons. The main reason they fly is for food, they also fly for shelter, to get away from uh, the weather or away from a predator. And they also fly for breeding as well, either building a nest or uh, finding a mate and things like that. So, uh, so Basil, so he's just learnt this easy option of, uh, of working then, which is just to, uh, to run around. So, you're coming over then. Quite often people think, yes, you see dogs now, well done. Basil, come on, good boy. There you go. So quite often people ask us with the, uh, the owls, why is he awake, why is he out during the daytime? But because he's always been hand-reared and always fed by... Oh, good boy, a bit of flying, excellent. Uh, because he's always been, uh, been hand-reared by people, that's his routine is to come out in the day because we've always fed him during the day. We do fly him at dusk and we do fly him at night. Um, at the centre, we do owl evenings where people can come along and fly some of the owls that we've got at the centre. And uh, say, Basil, sometimes he's used on those, uh, those owl evenings. Um, so he does does fly at night as, uh, as well, but uh, obviously when we come out to displays, he has to fly and work during the course of the day. Thank you, Basil. Come on, then. good boy. Right then, what we need to do though is we need to make Basil fly a little bit further because obviously he's not really done much and he's not used much energy. Now we've discovered Basil. Good boy. We've discovered a way in the last 13 years of him coming out to displays of actually getting him to fly. What we need to do is to put things in his way. Basically, people, or especially children, okay? So what we need, and mums and dads can come out if they want to as well, but just to warn you, what's gotta happen this time is you've actually gotta lie down. So. We need quite a few people then to come out, so especially children, but say so mums and dads can come out to set as well. And what we want you to do this to start off with is to just stand in one line then. So we've got any volunteers then? There we are, we've got a few coming out then. So we just need one, one line standing one behind each other at the moment then, and then we'll, uh, we'll sort you out from there, that's it. Is that all we've got so far? At least we've beaten the total up with us. We always know with Basil we have to have more than five. Five or less, he walks over the top of them. Um, so at least we've got more than five now, so we're okay. Right then, so what you need to do then is to just sit down then on the grass and then not yet, but in a second you'll actually lie down. Now what he's going to do, he's actually going to fly really low over the top of you. Naturally in the wild, owls and the hawk as well, when she was flying, they get quite low to the ground. If they're higher up off the ground, five or six foot off the ground, they've actually got to flap their wings. Whereas if they come down out of a tree and then they get really low to the ground, they form a cushion of air against the ground so they can glide. So they actually save energy. So as said, that's all Basil's trying to do is save energy. That's why he's walking around. And so that's all he's going to do now is save energy. So he will glide really low right over the top of you. Now, because he hasn't done much so far, we're going to have to do them a few times. We're going to go three times, okay? Backwards and forwards, and try and make him do a little bit more then. There we are, add him to the line then. So, if you want to lie down then, on your backs, so don't lie on your front, because you won't see him flying. Now, obviously, two things, health and safety. The obvious is don't move at all. Now, the other thing you better do, just in case, you better put your hands over your mouths in case he poos on the way over. You never know. No, not really. Keeps it quiet then, doesn't it, Basil? Right then, Basil. Oops. So, are you ready then? So if you keep lying down then, we're going to get him to fly right over you, hopefully. Basil! There we go! Good boy. So the only thing that will sort of touch you as he flies over the top 
is either the tips of his wing feathers or what are called the jesses, which are the leather straps that are actually hanging off his legs. So they sometimes touch you a little bit as he flies over. Right then, should we go back again then? Here we go, lie down again then. Come on, good boy. Yes. There we go. And we're going to go one final time then. Okay, one last time. No? <laughs> so, uh, so the owls then are a bit different to the, to the hawk. The hawk uses its eyesight to find its food. An owl uses its hearing. So you might notice then, just when he wasn't looking at me, I just moved the microphone out of the way to shout his name. Because obviously if I shout his name through the microphone, he just thinks I'm over there, and where my voice is coming from. So I just have to move the, uh, the microphone out the, uh, out of the way. So we'll try one final time now. Come on. So this is, only what, this is why we only go three times. You get slower and slower and slower. You may have heard of a flock pride alliance and a flock of sheep and possibly even a murder of crows. The collective noun for owls is a parliament of owls. And we think it's called a parliament because they think a lot and there's never much action. As you can see, it's a basil. Right then, try one final time then. Basil! Right over the top of you. Excellent. Good boy then, Basil. Thank you very much then. Do you want to go back, back outside? So, Basil, as I said, is a, what's known as a Bengal or an Indian eagle owl. He's what's known as a Bengal or an Indian eagle owl. Anybody want a feather? Um, so, he's going through his mold, going through his change of feathers at the moment. So, uh, so they do that every year, change all of their, their feathers. Um, so, he's, uh, so, he's known as an Indian eagle owl, and he weighs about two pounds in weight. The largest owl in the world is what's known as a European eagle owl. And a female European eagle owl can actually weigh up to eight pounds of weight. So four times the weight of, uh, of this one. So what we're going to do then is we need to put Basil back into his travel box over there. All the 